agree, you can't keep him out of the game. Ball gone. There's another you just said he's not. Hello and welcome again to the Windies Insider. Stay tuned because we have conversations with two past West Indian superstars in Sir Andy Roberts and Sir Kirtley Ambrose. This is a packed show, so you want to stay tuned for all of it on this edition of the Windies Insider. We love to hear from our legends on this show. Today we are going to talk to Sir Andy Roberts and Sir Kirtley Ambrose. Let's hear their stories. First, first and foremost, Kirtley, you've played some blinders against England in your time. You know there was a 46 all out again in Trinidad. There was your eight wickets in Bridgetown. There was your last Test against England, of course, back in 2000. What really sticks out to you from playing England? What are the me memories that you have? Well, I've had some wonderful battles against England. Um, for many years, I played many series against them. One of the things that really helped me along is that I played county cricket as well. I spent six seasons at Northamptonshire. Yep. So I get to pretty much know most of the England players. So when I come up against them in international cricket, I would never say it was easy. I would never say that. It was hard work, but I have a pretty good understanding of the strengths and weaknesses. Yes. You know, so that helped me along quite a bit. But um, you're talking about some special moments, yes, that 46 all out in, in Trinidad was something special. 8 to 45 in Barbados. We were down one in that series. We mm -hmm. had to win that game in order to save the series. And uh, Jack Russell, what a stubborn cricketer, <laughs> was holding us up. And, you know, we took the second new ball and I got him out, bowled when I kept a bit low. And then that opened the floodgates. You know, so we've had some wonderful battles over the years against England. And did England mean anything more to you? compared to playing to other teams? You know, if you're playing Australia or India, was there anything more or less special or was it just another game in your mind to well, tackle? Well, in my mind as an ultimate professional, it doesn't matter which team I'm playing against. My focus has always been the same. Because for me, it's about winning. Mm -hmm. And I will do everything within the rules and regulations of the game to win. And so I'll never really say, okay, England, let me go easy or let me go hard. No, all teams I play against, it's always the same focus because I really love winning. Winning to me is a nice feeling. And so if you were here, start of February, when I think it's the second test here in Antigua against England, three test series, Barbados, Antigua, St. Lucia. Looking ahead and the, the squad at the moment, yeah, we've had some tough times in Bangladesh and India. What, what's your view on the squad and how it's developing? What, what do you see and what, what, what do you possibly predict in terms of the, the series ahead? It's not going to be easy. England obviously are favourites. You know, we got to make that clear. They mm -hmm. are favourites. And uh, we didn't do very well in India. We are struggling at the moment in Bangladesh. And so we, England coming here in January, I'm quite sure that they're extremely confident that they can steamroll us. Mm -hmm. And why, 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 why wouldn't they be? But at the same time, we are at home. And I still believe that we will spring a few surprises. The last time England came here, a couple of seasons ago, no one expected us to draw that series, and we did. They were surprised a lot of English folks as well. So it could very well be the same, but it's not going to be easy. We have to do much, much better, a lot better than we are doing now. But I believe that will spring a few surprises. Because it's a, it's a young team, young squad, but there's some really talented guys in there. Is there anyone who really stands out to you, either with a bat or ball, that you keep your eye on at the moment? Well, I, I don't necessarily like to call individuals. Because for me personally, it takes a whole team to win matches. Sometimes you start calling names, you may call two or three names, you may forget somebody else, and then you're like, start to get all kind of calls, how about so-and-so, yeah, you yeah. know? So I try to stay away from calling names. But like I said, they're they are a bunch of young guys. Most of these guys just started a career a couple of years ago, still learning the art, and uh, they have some talent, right? So. I will try not to name names at this present moment, just in case I miss one or two. You know, they wouldn't feel like I'm disrespecting them. Sure. So, but I think, 
at the end of the day, it takes a whole team. Because my philosophy is very simple. No one man can yeah. win a game for no team. And people ask, what do you mean by that? How oh, he scored 100, he took five wickets. I said, that's fine. How about the other guys who inflicted a run out or scored 20 or got two wickets to change the game? So it takes a team to really win matches. Some guys may get more recognition because they score 100 or take a five wicket haul, which is acceptable. But generally, it takes a team. Fantastic. Really great to hear. Thank you so much. An exciting series ahead. And I'm sure we'll see you here in Antigua for the I test certainly match. will be here, rooting for the Windies, of course. And maybe if I show my face, you know, often enough, the inner guys might start to wobble a little bit, thinking, you know, there's Ambrose, you know. When they see the <laughs> eyes. <laughs> but it, could be, it should be a fantastic series. Wonderful. Great to have you again. Thank Thanks you. so much. Thank you me. very much. Well, you were a feared fast bowler. You were a feared fast bowler. Was I? Yes, you were. <laughs> and um, not only in the bowling attack, but you were a fantastic strategist. Now, can you tell us, how, how did you approach your game? What, what was special about you? Well, I just think a lot about cricket. You know, um, once I'm playing, I start to think the day before, how we're going to approach the next day. You, you go to practice and you practice what you want to do in the match. You don't just turn up a practice for practice sake. What were some of the things that you did differently that caused you to be such a successful bowler? I used to watch everybody who played cricket. I used to watch 90% of the opposition, you know, when I'm not playing. Just watch, just watch. Try to pinpoint where you see there's a slight weakness and try to exploit it as much as possible. So, so you, before the TV analyst came, you were your own analyst? We were. Yes, you know, I used right? to, most of my career, I used to work with Michael Holden. Yes. And most nights we just sit and go back over the day's play and think, look, this guy is suspect to a ball, you know, short of a length to his body. So we're going to try to see how much, you know, we can exploit that weakness. Now, young fast bowlers are among our many, many viewers on here on the Windies Insider. So we want you to talk to them. What can they do differently so that they can be successful? Just think about the game. You have to think about the game. You have to eat cricket, you have to drink cricket, you have to sleep cricket. And even when you're walking, I, I remember there's a youngster mm. who turned out to be George Ferris. Yes. He used to walk and commentate, you know, and Ferris Bowling. <laughs> Just similarly, Carlisle Bess yes. used to do the same thing when he was batting, even in test matches. He used to commentate. It shows you how much he's thinking about the game. And I don't think that a lot of young players think much of cricket today because they don't even watch it. But I used to watch. I used to, even when we were batting, I used to watch every ball. Now, is there any young fast bowler in the West Indies that excites you? Oh, Shane Thomas, you know, he has some pace. He has some pace. Has some pace. Yeah. But um, I don't think he's strong enough at the moment. He may be physically big and strong, but he's strong up here. is not for fast bowling. You have to be strong from here down because your legs must be able to take you throughout the day. And that is part of the problem with West Indies um, fast bowlers. If you look at the majority of the test matches that we've played in the last five or four or five years, yeah. is that West Indies make inroads early, but, but, then, we don't have but the, then we don't have the firepower to come to back towards the right, towards end of the, the day. End. And, because and they say that is the difficult part, no? the, that, that period when you, you, you know, the, the batsmen are in and you have to bowl, that's when you have to work hardest. Anybody can bowl fast for three or four overs, right. but not anybody can bowl fast overs number 15, number 16 during the day. And you have to train for that. I know that our players of today, they spend more time in the gym, you know, trying to look good. Look, the physique. Yeah, the yeah. physique. Oh yeah, they have some beautiful physique. But down below here, they're very weak. And they don't run. Cricket is a running sport. If you go and watch a lot of these people training, tell me how much you see them run. Almost anything you do on a cricket field, 
it involves running. Unless you even we could keep these days, yeah. have to chase. Yes. Yeah. Because it, it's a it's a change in game. So so people must now come up to yeah. the expectation of, of, of the modern game. Yeah, of course. But you have you have to be to be heads on. If you check West Indies were the first team that took up this physical thing before the, the matches. Mm -hmm. Because Dennis Waite used to drink. <laughs> he used to drink sometimes two, three cases of beer at night. And he had to run it off in the morning. <laughs> so he would run from the hotel yes. to the grounds. But we never run from the hotel to the grounds. But when we get to the grounds, we used to follow him. We right. used to run. Right. And there's, that is how we realize that if you're strong, if your legs are strong as fast bowlers, then you'll be able to last the day. And some, some of us used to bowl faster towards the end of the day than at the beginning of the day. Now, we had many proud moments watching you over your career. Now, tell us, what was your proudest moment um, in the Windies Colours? Proudest moment was beating Australia in Australia in 1979-80 because West Indies have always been to Australia, play beautiful cricket, I think if you, if you go back in the archive, you would have seen a photograph of West Indies, the crowds cheering on West Indies in 1960-61. They lost the series, mm -hmm. but the crowd that was bidding them farewell shows how well they played during that series, but they lost. We went back in 75-76, my first tour to Australia. We played as well as Australia, or even better than Australia because the Australian captain at the time said, look, they beat us 5-1, but there was no difference between the two teams. Well, we know there was a difference, right. but I wouldn't say what it is. <laughs> and when we went back in 79, 80, and we beat them, you know, that was my proudest moment, even more so than winning the World Cup in 75. You're into so many things. Let's talk a little bit about your foundation. Now, you created a foundation some years ago. How is that going? Well, we're just um, getting off the ground because, you know, it takes time before people support things in Antigua. And what we do, we try to raise funds for groups within the community, whether it's a church, school, cricket club, football club. We try to raise funds to assist them with the development of whatever they're doing. How is it going? How it's, is going it going? it's going all right. It's, um, going all right. it's coming um, January, last week, Sunday in January. Mm -hmm. We'll be having the, the third one. And so far, we've raised some funds to the Bolands Primary School where we assist them in building a science lab. We assist the Erlins Cricket Club last year to try and build a pavilion. Because you know in Antigua that we don't have many clubs with um, pavilion and bathroom facilities. Right. So we're trying our best. So, so what's the future? What, what do you see as a future for this foundation? Because it sounds exciting, sounds like something that is worthwhile of supporting. So how do you see the future for the foundation? Well, the, the future should hold no bounds. Because I think apart from cricket, this football, we, I think we're going to try our best to assist the St. Joseph Anglican Church again so that we can you know, put a roof on the building that's here. So any little thing that in, within the St. Mary's community, we will be trying our very best to try and make sure that we can give even fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. It's far better than what they're having at the moment. It's not too early. Use this opportunity to invite people to your next event. Oh, yes. <laughs> but we'll be promoting it you know, during, yes. the, during the T20. We'll be promoting it. Yeah. And also, the last, the last year, we did fairly well with the the ODIs that they had here with the support of the English people. You know, we're hoping that we can get more people involved in it, but it takes time, you know. A lot of people in the southern area do not like to support things until they know the benefit that they gather from it. Our under-19s are going to be in action later this year and preparation has started. We catch up with the coaches and the team to see what they have been up to. It's very much the start point for this group of players going to the, the next Under-19 World Cup, which is January 2020. 
Uh, we've seen the players in the regional tournament in July and August, um, but this is the first time we've actually had them together to work with. So uh, for us as coaches to get to know the players, players to, to, to get familiar with us um, and just get a better understanding of the way that they play, uh, their method and how we can start to develop that and also start to get them thinking around what the conditions would be like in South Africa, how that might influence some of their methods. So um, coming to the end now, it's been, it's been very productive. Um, a lot of information for the players. They've worked very well, very hard, embraced all the sessions, both uh, practical sessions and theory sessions. So certainly from my perspective, the, the aims and the objectives of um, educating the players giving them a little bit of information um, and being confident that they can return to their territories and continue the work. Uh, we, we feel that we're in a good place. It's very early days. The, the encouraging signs are that we, we, we have the makings of a really good pace attack. Um, Roddy's been working with the, with the fast bowlers and obviously one of the strengths of the 2016 team was, was the, the pace attack. Um, and going to South Africa, we realised that we really need to recreate the, the, uh, the ability to create pressure um, and take wickets with, with the new ball. So it's encouraging from that sign. Uh, batting wise, we've got some outstanding ball strikers. Uh, we, had, we had two middle practice days. Uh, the ball was continually sa sailing over the boundary. Um, so that's really encouraging. We need to refine it a little bit get them to understand a bit more about their method. But I'd say those are the two things that, that stand out at the moment, which definitely um, give us something to build on um, look, moving forward. A couple of weeks ago, I, I, I sent um, the director of cricket a message to say how enjoyable it, how enjoyable it has been 2018. You know, you started off with the journey working with the, the A team and obviously we won against England and then I, I, you did um, a team to Canada and we were runners up in that tournament. The, 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 the ladies who did very well in the, in the World T20 are now working with the under-19s to finish off that um, the year. Obviously, um, when I started coaching for the, for the West Indies way back in 2006, you know, my first, my first job was with the West Indies under-19 team to the World Cup. So it's something that I've done for a very long time, so it's, it's been very, very enjoyable. When you go back to 2006, you didn't have all the technology. Now you're seeing the, the technology we had. We had um, Leon Johnson, who was captain of the 2006 World Cup team, come in to speak to the boys. And we were only commenting that, you know, we had, we had three staff at, at that time, which was Jimmy Adams, myself, and, and Phyllis Burnett. And now we've gone full circle where you can have six, seven, or eight staff. So it just shows you that in a 12 year period, how different it has changed. You know, you now can go to the analysts and get footage and all that before you're depending on your train eye and your, and your own little camera to do your little work and whatever. So it's come a long way, things have changed. The boys are now seeing themselves and some of them are seeing themselves on footage for the first time and they're enjoying it. And they're willing to work on the technical deficiencies because they're seeing them. The World Cup is a year away. So you're trying to give them the foundation, the basics, you know, um, good wrist position and better running techniques because I find that with fast bowling if you run better and you have a better technique you can bowl for longer and you can be more consistent so that's something that they will take away from this camp and they'll bring back you know they will have worked on it and they, they will, we would know if they've done any work because when they come back in Easter we would have seen a gradual improvement in the things that we've asked them to do. My name is Ashmin Dead, I'm from Guyana, bowling around there. My name is Matthew Ford, from Barbados, all around there. My name is Matthew Patrick, I'm from Trinidad and I'm batting all around there. My name is Leonardo Julian, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago and I'm a wicketkeeper batsman. My name is Elwell Francis, I'm from Antigua, all around there. My name is Kimani Melius, I'm from St. Lucia. Batsman. My name is Kurt McKenzie from Jamaica, a batsman. My name is Joshua James, I'm from Tobago, I'm a all-rounder. 
<laughs> My name is Kelvin Umro, I'm from Guyana and I'm a bowler. My name is Daniel Beckford, I'm from Jamaica, I'm a batsman. My name is Antonio Morris, I'm from Barbados and I'm a batsman all around My name is Nico Rifa, I'm from Barbados and I'm a batting all-rounder. My name is Avinash Mahavir Singh, I'm from Trinidad and Tobago and I'm bowling all around. My name is Noin Young, I'm from Barbados and I'm an all-rounder. My name is Jaden Seals from Trinidad and Tobago, fast bowler. My name is Javali Ramlagan, I'm from Trinidad and I'm an all-rounder. My name is Zawandi White and I'm from Mossop and I'm a bowling all-rounder. My name is Sachin Singh, I'm from Guyana and I'm a batting all-rounder. My name is Kevin and I'm from Guyana, batting all-rounder. Exciting stuff from our boys as they get ready for the World Cup coming up later this year. This has been a jam-packed edition of the Windies Insider. Go on our website, windyscricket.com, and view this and other editions. Join us next time for another edition of Windy's Insider.